Now the whole of this cab is fiberglass, including the front nose and the doors, the panels here. Yeah. And this fiberglass is resistant to impacts from things from the track, bricks and things like yes, that? Yes, we've yeah. done tests, uh, impact tests up to 200 kilometres an hour, both on the nose mm -hmm. and on the main shell. Mm. Construction of the fiberglass cabin required a number of individually complex stages. From the original drawings, a full-size wooden pattern was built, coated with resin and polished to a high sheen. Onto this pattern was built one of the most complex fiberglass moulds ever accomplished in this country. Built in four separate sections, the mould was then bolted together in a special rotating jig, so that the laminate could always be laid down hand. The result is a main shell, approximately 50 millimetres thick, moulded all in one piece for greater strength. The shell has both an inner and outer gel coat skin and incorporates all necessary conduits, pipes and mounting plates ready for fitting out. The nose is a separate unit, a good example of the modular design used throughout the train. The XPT engine is a Paxman Valenta 12-cylinder turbocharged diesel unit rated at 1,492 kilowatts, directly coupled to the brush alternators. This is basically the same engine and alternator set as used in the British HST, but the engine has been derated to suit our altitudes and ambient temperatures. Despite its size, there's still room for crew members to pass or gain access for maintenance. The engine cooling group, or radiator to the layman, is constructed entirely from aluminium, again as a means of weight reduction. Obviously, because of our ambient temperatures, this is some twice the size of the HST version and has been specially designed for Australian conditions. It's a complete module which can be removed without disturbing any other engine components. The same applies to the main electrical module supplied by Brush. Hatches in the roof of the power car allow easy replacement of any of the components so that downtime is kept to a minimum when major services are required. This modular concept is carried through to the smaller components for ease of routine maintenance. Electrical wiring throughout the train is to a numbered code with the identifying number printed on each individual cable at regular intervals. At any part of the train, the required cable can be identified and traced. Power throughout the train for lighting, cooking and air conditioning comes from an auxiliary alternator coupled to the main traction alternator. With two power cars to each train, there's ample for all needs. This eliminates the auxiliary power car, common to most country trains, another major weight saving. The driver's superb impact-resistant laminated windscreen is 25 millimetres thick and contains its own heating unit for clear visibility at all times. The completed cabin with all its controls, electrical wiring and air hoses already fitted is simply lifted into position and connected. There's a massive steel collision post to protect the crew. This is covered by the detachable nose. The exterior styling, aesthetics and colour scheme of the XPT were the result of considerable development and study. The aim was to create a visual impact so good looking that people would want to travel on it once they'd seen it pass by. But to keep passengers coming back for more, the ride had to be far better than they'd ever experienced before. Comeng knew that their own bogey design would achieve this but the customer selected the existing British design which required considerable modification to suit our poorer track conditions. Commonwealth Engineering manufactures these bogies at their Mittagong factory 
and though the modifications have resulted in very good ride characteristics, are continuing to develop their own lighter and less complex design. One thing common to both bogey designs is the braking system. Rapid acceleration requires equally rapid braking, so huge discs are fitted to both sides of each wheel. Almost the whole of the wheel area is used for braking, providing a margin of safety equal to or better than anywhere else in the world. To maintain traction at all times, even under emergency braking conditions, all axles are fitted with wheel slip detectors, which sense and correct the onset of slip automatically and individually on each axle. The traction motors, one on each axle, are mounted on the bogey frame so as to minimise the unsprung mass. Drive is through a flexible coupling and gearbox. Nothing was left to chance. The braking required for such power was thoroughly tested on one of the world's most powerful dynamometer rigs. This machine can simulate a mass of up to 32 tonnes per wheel at speeds up to 250 kilometres an hour. The first bogey is were rolled under an XPT power car in June 1981, just under two years after work commenced on the design. The power car bogies are of the fabricated type, using steel coil springs in conjunction with Alston links. At 72 tonnes mass, the XPT power cars are among the lightest 1,500 kilowatt or 2,000 horsepower diesel-electric locomotives in the world. By contrast, existing locomotives of the same power in New South Wales weigh in at 121 tonnes. These are the first purpose-built passenger locomotives constructed for the New South Wales rail system since the days of steam. Before the completed power car is tested on the track, Static load testing is conducted in Comenge's own test facility. The alternator is disconnected from the traction motors and hooked up to a huge electric heating unit similar to a giant electric kettle. This dummy load allows engineers to verify the electrical output and check for any faults. An array of test instruments monitors all functions of the power car as the engineer controls the powerful Paxman diesel by remote control. Detailed readings are taken for each of the five throttle settings with the engine revolutions and electrical output checked against the design parameters. It's a complex but very effective way to boil the kettle.